Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. I am Amalgam Ash, and today I want to show you one of my favorite features of RPG developer Bakin, and that is subgraphics. Seriously, I am so excited for subgraphics. Subgraphics are 3D models or particles that you can attach to other 3D models or particles. You can use subgraphics in a variety of ways, but today I'm going to cover what I think is going to be the most popular use case and my favorite, and that is changing the appearance of your player's characters. Using subgraphics will actually be able to put equipment on our characters. And not only can we visually change the appearance of our character and their equipment, but we can now also event systems that allow the player to have complete character customization. Using subgraphics, we can even change the facial expressions on our characters, making them even more expressive and animated, all during gameplay. It's surprisingly easy to do even if you don't have any experience with 3D models. I think you'll find playing with this feature is very rewarding. So to get started, let's click on the resources menu on the left. Once there, let's make sure that we're in the 3D stamps menu. I imported this character from the Smile Game Builder DLC pack. He's very simple, and he already comes with all of his animations, which is going to help me illustrate exactly what adding this subgraphic using this feature will do. You'll be surprised to learn that this actually works for 2D stamps as well, since they're being displayed in a 3D environment. But I'll show you that in just a moment. So back to our model, on the right hand side of the screen, under basic settings, you'll see that his subgraphic setting is turned off. We can turn this on for any of our 3D stamps or 2D stamps. Once we turn it on, a new menu will appear. It's pretty simple and you can even add more. I'm going to add a subgraphic of a sword. So I'm just going to click anywhere in the box next to the subgraphic setting, find my sword model, and click add and exit. The sword model will appear with our character model. However, Bakin doesn't automatically know exactly where to tie this new accessory. In this case, it's a sword and I want him to have it in his hand. So in our subgraphic menu, we're going to click next to attach node. Right now, it's set to underscore root. And that pretty much means the handle of the object is being quote unquote held by the root, which is more or less exactly where the 3D model is standing. Now this might actually be very useful if you'd like to import your own, say, shadows or puddles or anything else that your character might be standing on or in. But since we want to change this, we will click root. And now we see a brand new menu. This is the model node picker. This intelligently views all of the existing nodes in your 3D model. These are all of the nodes that are in this SGB model. So you might not have the exact same list of nodes. Don't worry though, when I check out this 3D model that I downloaded of a character that was perfectly compatible with Mixamo, I saw that her nodes were named in a pretty intuitive way. And I'm willing to bet that most of the models that you find will have nodes that are more or less named intuitively like this. But even if they're not, you can explore and choose different nodes to see where the sword will be placed on the model. You'll notice that you can place things on the body, head, left arm, left hand, left item hook, left leg, foot, right leg, foot, arm, hand, right item hook, and body. This is the key that will allow us to place any piece of equipment onto our character. Facial expressions and different hairstyles would go on the head, and different equipment and clothing could go on the body. Let's stick with the sword example for now and put the sword in his right hand. And the sword has appeared in this model's right hand. We'll turn the view collision off so we can view this just a little bit easier. Click through any of the animations and you'll see that the accessory is simply tied to the model's hand. Now it's not in the right position, so we're gonna change that. I'll set him to wait to make this a little bit easier on myself. And now it's time to explore the rest of the options in the subgraphics. There's not that many and they're really easy to understand. For one, we have the relative coordinate X, Y, and Z. If you change these, you can offset exactly where the subgraphic is. It is still tied to that specific node, but now it is offset. That might be really handy for things like minions or pets following your character around. In this case, you could even make the sword magical and fly in front of the player. We'll leave those at zero. You can change the relative angle X, Y, and Z as well, and that is what we're going to do to make this look right for our character. Now the angles might always need some playing with because they're the angles that are relative to the position of the node. So the same set of XYZ rotation coordinates might not be the same unless you're attaching a subgraphic to the exact same node every single time. In this case, I really like leaving relative angle Y and Z alone and setting relative angle X to minus 90. I think that looks really good. The sword is a little bit outside of his hand now. So now I guess I could change the relative coordinates and you can click and drag on the label of the relative coordinate in order to move this more dynamically or you can actually type in the field if you'd like more precise control. 
there. I think setting both the X and Y coordinates to 0.05 is absolutely perfect for this sword. Finally, you can actually change the scale right here. You can change the scale of the X, Y, and Z all separately. Now in no time at all, I can have my character wielding a dagger or a broadsword, or whatever you would call this thing. The Giant Slayer? I call it fun at parties, but not fun at giant parties. So now that I've adjusted the position and size and coordinates of the sword, I can take a look at the different animations and I can see that all of them work out really, really well. You see the subgraphic is actually following the movement, including the rotation of the node. So if there are any animations on the model that rotate the hand, the sword is going to go with it. <laughs> He's got like a swimming animation and like a bicycling, I think, animation. It's actually really cool. Okay, so now that we've added that subgraphic, we can actually choose to add more if we want. And you can add as many as you need. If you just click the add button, you'll get a second subgraphic menu and you can keep on adding subgraphics. You can delete the ones that you don't need and you can copy and paste the subgraphics as well. There's one more setting that I need to show you in the subgraphic menu and that's apply position only. If you turn this on, you can still adjust the rotation and coordinates of the subgraphic, but now it will not take into consideration the rotation of the node. It will always be oriented in a static way. It probably doesn't work out so well for weapons, but I'm sure it could work out really great for other things. Now, as I said before, you can do this exact same process with 2D sprites. Even though they don't have nodes to attach subgraphics to, you can actually just attach the subgraphic to what would be the root of the sprite and then position it however you you want relative to the sprite. And you won't use sprite sheets to overlay the sprite. It won't work like that. You'll have to use static singular images of the subgraphics that you want to use. So now that you know how to put subgraphics on to a particular model, how do you use events to toggle the appearance of those subgraphics? Well, that's thankfully also very easy. And you can do this for players or for events, but they work the exact same way no matter which way you go. It's almost the exact same event panel. For players, just click on the player tab and then scroll all the way to the bottom and select change display state of player subgraphic. There are just three parts to this event panel, the subgraphic number to be changed, visible or hide, and then time to change in seconds. For the first part, we can select what subgraphic we would like to change on the model and we can input a number directly here or we can use the value that is stored in a variable. I put a sword and shield on Marie and since the sword was the first subgraphic that I used, that's number one. The shield would be number two. I can choose whether to make these subgraphics visible or hide them. For time to change, anything that you add here, either directly or using the value of a variable, will cause the subgraphic to fade into or out of view over time. I'll leave it to zero so that it can be immediate. And now to show you the fruits of my labors. Ooh, that's a nice sword you got there. What happens if I talk to this NPC? Oh, she's asking me if I would like to have a sword. And now I have the sword. She gave it to me. Well, the mage lady looks like she has a pretty powerful shield. Nice. If I talk to her, she says, you'll need a shield to go with that sword. She just gave it to me for free. There's gotta be some catch. This is too cool. Hey, this lady's got some chickens. What's her deal? Hey, that sword and shield is perfect for what I need. Give them to me. Oh. Uh, well, I'm pretty sure whatever's about to happen here is illegal, so I'll leave this video here. I hope that you guys learned a little bit about subgraphics and are inclined to try that out for yourself now. As always, I appreciate you watching the video and hope that you'll consider subscribing. That way you never miss tutorials for RPG developer Bakin, and I'll see you in the next video. Have a fantastic rest of your day, and bye for now. Mm -hmm.